Okay, we're going to do a quick version of the abstract expressionism lecture if you missed it in class. So I'm going to try the movement here. Here we go. So the question is, is this art? This is about the size of the wall of the classroom, right? It's pretty large here. Um, and people question, is this art? A lot of people think, no, I was one of those people until I had this assignment and started doing this and saw that, yeah, this is art. Um, maybe they'll move you. This is actually called Mural by Jackson Pollock. It's in the University of Iowa, and it's worth 140 million dollars. People argued over where whether or not to sell it when the uh, the art room got flooded here, but uh, they decided not to. So, uh, what is it? So, what is this abstract expressionism? And it ties in this other stuff we've been talking about uh, earlier in the year, but it's this idea of trying to get at the emotional expression, right? Get to get the deeper, more spiritual, more individualistic meaning of something. And we'll talk more about that. Here's some quick examples of that. You see the, the artist uh, first is Jackson Pollock. We'll talk more about that. You can see him physically in the canvas, moving around it. That's part of the action painting. You can see the action of him making the actual painting. Sunflower, I think, attempting to get the actual feeling of sunflowers as opposed to drawing a sunflower, right? So a literal sunflower versus the abstract idea of sunflower. Franz Klein, and if you watch the movies at the end, you'll see like why he's doing this and how he's doing this, but he's using house paint here, and he's really zooming in uh, like on something like a phone book. You would zoom in on it to, to get abstractly this uh, this picture, this idea. He actually did sketches and stuff, but watch the video. You'll see uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, Hans Hoffman, he's using, um, you know, obviously this is more of a landscape. It's a little more literal, so you can kind of see the shapes and the moon here in the city, um, but still abstract. So you know, there's a lot of variation with these people as well. You got to understand that this is a movement still going on today. So there's lots of lots of variation on this uh, of how to do it and, and what it means. And people did it for a little while and they'll quit. Uh, Rothko here, watch the video on this too. He's trying to make color itself just the art, right? Just uh, he does all kinds of things with the materials to like use turpentine to like burn the edges off and smooth around the edges here. Uh, just trying to make the art be the color itself. He thought people really looked at it, it'd be like music, it could make you, you know, cry. And that is the idea, right? We're trying to make some kind of idea or a feeling uh, get across to the person who's, who's viewing this when you make your artwork the same thing. A little more literal, you see, with the, the picture of the, the woman, you can actually see the woman there. Anyway, so why are they doing this? Why are they making abstract art here? Um, it's, it's World War II. Once again, it's a, you know, a fallout from this, this time period, this great war. And people started saying paintings like this, right, American Gothic here in Iowa, uh, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It's, uh, it's not you know, flowers reclining nudes, people playing the cello. It didn't feel right in a time after World War II um, when the world kind of got turned upside down. You can have the horrors of the Holocaust, uh, you know, all these people dying in war. And so they actually started to go back to... Um, surrealism. They said they, they try to look back to the past after World War One. You know how they reacted to that, and moved away from this realistic kind of painting more toward this, this surrealistic here. Right. So once again, uh, abstract expression tries to be a little bit rebellious. Right. They're breaking the rules. Right. Is it art? Is it not art? They're individualistic here. Um, it's about people making these individual changes within the art, and some say nihilistic. A lot like Zoo Story. Right that uh, you know, life is, 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 doesn't have a specific set out path uh, for us here. This ties back into the, the, the feeling of the time period. We have books like Peyton Place, which kind of dug deeper under the surface of small town America. And uh, you turn over that rock and there's all kinds, you think it's all nice and beautiful, turn over the rock and there's all kinds of creepy crawlies coming out here and people are, are not nearly as, as uh, perfect and ubiquitously uh, conforming and, and being good people as people think on the outside, right? Under the surface, a little darker. Same with the man in the gray flannel suit. If you remember, that's about the soldier coming back from war. He's a, you know, saving the, 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 the world, and then he comes back, and uh, he's fighting someone to hold his boss's coat. And he realizes, you know, is this the point? Is this what I'm here for? Just this just stupid rat race, and how do you deal with war? And people don't understand. His wife doesn't understand what he went through in the war. Um, and so we're trying to, to, to go a little deeper here, right? They're trying to rebel against this conformity and the gender roles and the constant pressure to climb the social ladder. Looking for something more, more spiritual, more individualistic, more emotional, something that's more true. All right, 
So they're looking at this stuff, and you should look at this stuff, the spiritual, the unconscious mind, right? They're trying to be emotional. And they're not going to draw something you know, specific. If I want to do dog, I don't draw a dog. I draw the feeling of dog, right? Here's an example of that. Uh, do you want to draw every little ripple in the ocean, or do you want to get the feeling of the ocean? So this is the feeling of the ocean. Frank, I think that's really good. I like that one. So uh, a couple of the main types of uh, abstract expression is action painting and, and color field. So we'll talk about those real quick here. If you can see right here, right? Not if I zoomed in. But yeah, okay. Yeah, so they're, instead of just like pushing on the canvas, he put the canvas, Paul put the canvas on the ground, they gave him all kinds of new possibilities, right? And so he began to dribble and splash and smear the paint on the canvas. That's part of the action painting. You can imagine him walking around the canvas. It's a big canvas, usually fairly large. It's kind of hard to do. So, for example, here's, here's kind of a bad example of, boom, of abstract expressionism. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any feeling here, but also like it's a very tiny canvas. It's kind of hard to do that well on a very tiny canvas but you see layers and textures and movement it's, it's, it's the physical act of painting it is, is pretty obvious uh, by looking at the painting and they, and they are trying to express emotions and they're trying to get something across here you see the the woman modern woman here in the middle of the painting making the, the painting here you see the movement of it also the line itself i should say that quickly i mean the line itself becomes the artwork it's not just about um you know the line being used to color something in it's the line itself is actually the movement and he tries to create like an all overness he would do us uh you know he, he, he spontaneously uh, you know dribble with uh, uh, the end of a, paint, a hard paintbrush or something he'd dribble uh the paint and then he react to it so it wasn't just all pure spontaneous it was like a reaction to get the uh the feeling or the aesthetic he wants of the like unconscious and sub subconscious and conscious mind working together all right let's look at another one here we got color field, color paintings. It's now it's kind of like the lines being important. Now it's just the color being important. You have these large fields of flat, solid color, spread out, stained. The idea is that color becomes, you know, the art in itself. Here's some examples of color fields here. Watch the video on that too if you're interested. I want to talk a little about Jackson Pollock because he is the, probably the most famous. He was the rock star of the time period with this. Um, there's reasons why these paintings cost so much beyond just they're beautiful. But, <laughs> uh, you know, he's, he's a pretty well-known famous guy here he, he, he changed the game because he, he took it off the easel put it on the ground both literally metaphorically you see he really just uh, did things very differently here and people opened the floodgates for all kinds of innovation diversity um, one of the things interesting you might want to use in your art is that the process of making it is as important as the final product so you know the fact that you can see him make it or understand that he made it afterwards or how he made it can be interesting for the person uh, viewing the art um, like I talked about, it's a give and take. Uh, I really recommend watching these videos uh, on your own. You can just click on the thing and watch them. It explains it in a lot more detail. The MoMA is the uh, the website, and Jackson Pollock, obviously. So MoMA, Jackson Pollock, those kind of things. You get a much better understanding of what's going on in the art. But we don't have time to do that. It's going to run out. I highly recommend it. There's other videos here that's very much uh, interesting as far as like understanding the techniques and how to do it. So please look at those and do a little research on your artist. Use their ideas and their reasoning and their techniques and try to twist it because you don't want to just copy. You don't want to do bad copy. You don't want to be derivative. You want to make something that's new and interesting if you can. And that is abstract expressionism. I'm going to show you a couple examples of student work here real quick. Um, so that's just a different uh, you know, canvas. They're changing the canvas, kind of like Jackson Pollock, right? You're moving it to something different. Um, we see the color fields here, but done in a slightly different way. You can get some watercolors. You don't spend a lot of money on this. It's not something that should cost a lot here. Um, just a different canvas as well, right? Different object, uh, sculpture, trying to do the abstract expression on an actual thing. You got some, I don't know, something's just better than others. I think it could be accidental, it could be good, but um, it should make you feel something. It's that 90-10. We talked about that with any kind of communication, whether it's you know film or a book or it's art. You're trying to express a feeling or emotion. And if the person sees the art and they don't either think something or feel something, uh, I feel like you've, you've lost a, a chance to communicate here. You haven't done your job quite well enough. If you're too obvious and they slap me in the face, that can be bad as well. Um, I think it was interesting using colored pencils, but the texture on it was interesting, right? So it creates a little bit something different uh, with a little twist of the texture. 
And it's it, oh, this one's interesting because it was they used uh, Cincy like uh, smell uh, wax, and they poured it over the canvas, and it just smelled magnificent. Some different materials. So they you might want to choose your techniques or materials. Sometimes they would change the paints or change like how they do it. Uh, um, you can do this well. This is someone using uh, condiments here. I think it's ketchup, and I'm not sure what the blue was. Mustard, something else. If you see the texture, you can try to get some of that. I mean, it, this is uh, a little more. I think it's wax that they use for this. I'm not sure, but um, they got a little texture on here. It creates a little more movement. The color is obviously important as well. I mean, this person was clearly an artist. They have some idea of composition. Um, I know it's hard to replicate if you're not an artist, but uh, you can do idea. Good ideas make a big difference. Here we have the. Just taking off the tape, they taped it first and taking it away, removing something, much like uh, Rothko did with his turpentine. Same with this one where they actually put wax on it and then painted and took the, the wax off it and it became kind of an interesting, um, make you feel something here. Of course, this person knows how to do art. Different techniques, like different, they use uh, uh, Jackson Pollock used different materials to paint with, so she's using her shoe as part of the paint. Um, not sure that is. It's nice color blocks here in a slightly different way. I mean, that's kind of a modern take on the, the, the words on there, but some of the color block and, and, and color interaction. Anyway, I'm running out of time here, so uh, if you have questions about it, come and see me. That is the abstract expressionism. I'm going to attempt to end this.